prior in prior cases before the reform, plaintiffs would argue that you know one meal break violation would cause these additional wage and hour violations. And I've got a few of these set out here. A lot of different labor code provisions about timing of payment of wages, waiting time penalties for late payment of regular wages, waiting time penalties for employees who were terminated that weren't paid on time when they terminated or quit. And then um, obviously the wage statement violation, the requirement under uh, labor code section 226, the nine items that are required on a pay stub. So the argument would be, look, I missed a meal break. I wasn't paid for it. I, I didn't receive premium pay for it. And therefore I didn't receive all my pay on time. And therefore also I didn't receive a wage statement, accurate wage statement. So this one meal break violation could add up to three, maybe four um, penalties, the employee, the plaintiff's attorney would argue that um, they would get the PAGA penalty for each of these um, additional derivative claims too. Um, so the reformed PAGA prohibits the stacking to a certain extent and um, also gives the court trial court uh, discretion to reduce the penalty for any violation uh, you know, if the same conduct or emission resulted in multiple violations of the labor codes. So this was a big issue we've been fighting over for a few years on, uh, on the defense side, and now we're getting some relief on that. So um, it prohibits this double dipping that the plaintiffs normally come in and try to run up that, that total damages um, number when they approach the, the employer for settlement negotiations. So this is a great tool for employers to argue their, their liability is a lot more limited. Mm -hmm.